the three walked for the rest of the day until the darkness became too great, indicating that night had fallen. Raina noticed that the further south they went, the darker the sky seemed to become. The cold was growing greater as well. Thomas was now even more aware of the darkness around them, sensing that a foreboding presence was nearby, though he could not determine where. An image of the cloaked and hooded Granta flashed in his mind for a second. A great shudder went through him, and an icy cold breeze blew through him and filled his chest, and he felt it difficult to breathe. He gasped and fell to the ground. Raina and Lorne looked back at the sound. Raina moved forward. Thomas, what is wrong? Thomas shook his head and bent down and the vision left him. He stared up and waved her away. I shall be fine, but I fear I can go no further. There is something strange here. I don't like it. We must find another way. Lorne spoke. If you can't go further, then you can stay here. There is no other direction but south. We are all in danger. We will not carry you. The words were not yelled, but still hung in the air with a distinct ringing echo of the cavern. Thomas felt their sting, and it was as if the embers of flame within him erupted with an explosion of rage. I do not need you to carry me. His eyesight began to blur, obscuring all, even Raina. Through the veil, he could clearly see Lorne with a cloudy aura of pure shadow vibrating around him, with smoky tendrils forming into curled claws. The wand was in his hand. He could feel the heat of the spell he wanted to use. It was fire, an enhanced version he had read in their short stay under the mountain. Muru Igin! The warrior was startled and moved to lift his blade, but the fire was quicker. Thomas saw the shadow form dissipate as Lorne leapt to the ground and rolled into the snow. A massive fan of flame burst forth, and for a moment a wall of fire burned where the man had once stood. The snow atop the hills melted and filled the air with steam. Thomas stood transfixed by this for a moment before he looked down to his left, and then he awoke from his trance. The wizard beheld with horror the result of his destructive spell. Lorne was kneeling below, cradling something. The warrior looked up, his eyes filled with spiteful venom. You treacherous snake! Look what you have done! He stepped aside slightly, revealing a crouching Reina, who was staring at her outstretched hands. They were both badly burned. The skin was charred black and flaking, with red muscle revealed underneath. She stood staring at them in shock, for she had no feeling in her hands at all. She did not cry out only remaining transfixed by the sight of her injuries. Then she turned and looked at Thomas, confusion and fear marked upon her visage. Lorne lunged forward, forgetting his sword on the ground next to her. I'll kill you, you bastard! With a swift blow from his fist, Lorne sent the wizard to the ground and the wand out of his hands. Shocked by the sight of Reyna as she was, Thomas did not resist and fell to the ground with a bleeding mouth. Lorne was then upon him and had his other hand around the younger man's throat. I always knew you would become a liability. What a fool I was to trust another spellcaster. All snakes, the whole lot of you. Then a jolt of pain shot through the warrior's body and a blast of electricity shot forth from the wizard's hand, sending the other man reeling backward. 